Okay, so let's move on to advantage number four, and that is laser plastic welding's ability to weld 3D and complex shapes. Now the application you see here is a tail light, so again we are in the automotive industry, and what we really want you to take notice of here is the curvature of this tail light. Now let me zoom in, and I will trace out where the weld would take place, and it's going to be all around the edges of this tail light. Now as you can see, the curves of that tail light are far from simple. There's double curves involved and uh, deep height changes. Now if you were to weld this with, say, friction welding, the height changes would create pinch points, and those pinch points would generate more energy at certain spots than others, and you'd have a very inconsistent weld. However, with laser plastic welding, again due to localized heat, heat's placed only where it's needed and it's very consistent. Now this particular application also takes advantage of the twin weld 3D. This is a robotic arm assisted laser source and the advantage that it gives is that it's able to move the laser source relative to the joint. So any height changes in the application due to curves are a non-issue because the laser source is moving relative to that height. There's also one more thing I wanted to mention about the twin weld 3D system and this does fit quite well with um, 3D and complex shapes and that's a proprietary technology that uses halogen heat radiation in addition to the laser radiation. So there's really two clear advantages to this. The first being that the halogen heat sources will soften and anneal the plastic. Now when you're dealing with 3D and complex shapes, it's going to be tougher to get a really nice fit between the two parts. If the plastic is softer though, it's going to tend to fit better together. The second advantage is that the halogen lamps are essentially preheating the plastic around the laser. So the laser won't have to work as hard or it won't take as long for the laser to melt the plastic and create a weld seam and can reduce cycle times by up to half. So let's move on to advantage number five, which is laser plastic welding's ability to leave no particulates behind. Now, particulate development has become a big issue in both the medical and automotive electronics industries. Particulates left behind from the manufacturing process can potentially contaminate the application. Now, in this particular application, you see a microfluidic device uh, with very small channels. Tiny amounts of fluid are passed through those. And even the smallest particulate could contaminate the desired results for this particular device. In the automotive industry, what you're seeing is devices that have circuit boards in them. Particulates can get into those circuit boards and gum them up, uh, making them obsolete. So again, particulates are going to result in more failed parts during the manufacturing process. Now, the reason why laser plastic welding does not leave particulates is because during the process there's no frictional motion. Unlike ultrasonic welding or friction welding, uh, the parts aren't being rubbed together. Anytime you rub two pieces of plastic together, you're going to get a scaling effect or particulates developed. And that can be seen in this example where you have a laser plastic welded joint on the left and a friction welded joint on the right. And notice the difference in the cleanliness from the laser plastic welding joint to the scales and particulates left behind from the friction welded joint. So let's move on to advantage number six, which is precision. Now laser plastic welding has the ability to create welds in the less than millimeter range. Now what this means is that uh, devices such as these below were basically made possible by laser plastic welding. So the device on the left is a microfluidic device. Something to take note of with this device is that it's no larger than your cell phone, about three and a half inches long by two inches wide, and there are two full meters or six and a half feet of weld seams within that very small device. And then on the right, you have a microatomizer. And based on the fact that it's sitting on top of a finger, you can notice that that is about a dime-sized device. So what this will mean is that as the medical and electronics industries look to innovate smaller and smaller devices, that more precise joining methods are going to be required to actually assemble those pieces. And laser plastic welding is really on the forefront, opening up a lot of doors for those smaller, more innovative devices. Advantage number seven is probably the most flashy advantage, and it is aesthetically pleasing weld seams. Now the application you see here is a car taillight, and this taillight belongs to Hyundai's flagship luxury sedan, the Equus. Hyundai put a lot of emphasis on their taillights for this car. Uh, they brought in outside designers, and their goal was to create a 3D look for the light, and they did a very good job achieving it. 
Uh, laser plastic welding was chosen as the joining method because of its ability to create uh, tight seams. Now, after determining the capability of laser plastic welding, uh, they actually decided to use the weld in the design itself. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in on this tail light, and I'm going to trace out all along the top here. You can see that that is the actual weld joint. And notice they didn't even attempt to hide it. It was actually used as part of the design for the tail light. Now, aesthetically pleasing weld seams is kind of just icing on the cake. So where this advantage really comes into play is where it synthesizes with the other advantages that we talked about. No longer do you have to sacrifice um, quality of the function in order to get quality of the form. You can have a good looking part with very high quality function. Moving on to advantage number eight, we have the ability to weld different materials. Now we talked briefly uh, a little earlier about material compatibility and welding different types of plastics to one another. What we're really trying to get across here is the ability to weld hard to soft. Now this is a CV boot for a car. Uh, it's essentially a joint and the black piece of plastic you see there is flexible and the white piece will be welded inside of that. Also again along the same principles laser plastic welding has the ability to weld soft to soft materials. So that brings us to our ninth and final advantage which is process monitoring. Now process monitoring gives you the ability to uh, have a high level of quality assurance. And due to laser plastic welding's nature, there's multiple process monitoring techniques that can be taken advantage of, and we're going to go through four of those today. So the first technique we're going to talk about is melt travel monitoring, and there's two aspects to melt travel monitoring. There's the path, or um, what we call the melt travel or melt collapse, and then time. So essentially as the two parts are heated up and compressed together, the melt travel is the amount of compression that takes place. Now during testing, you'll determine the amount of melt collapse that's required to get a good quality weld. Also, you'll determine the amount of time that that should require to take place. So you're going to have a graph that looks like this. As you set those parameters, you'll enter those into the computer, and then during the manufacturing process, any part that falls outside of those parameters will be rejected, and then again, all of that data will be recorded so you can review it. So process monitoring technique number two is a pyrometer measurement and pyrometers are essentially going to measure the heat that's reflected off the surface of the component. Now let me zoom in here on this picture. The heat map on top uh, differs from the heat map on bottom based on this small gap right here. Now what this gap is going to indicate to us is that uh, this part uh, in particular lost heat at this point and we want to know that because we want to determine if that's a defect in the part if it's going to be something that's consistent throughout the entire manufacturing process. The third process monitoring technique is reflection diagnosis. Now as laser energy strikes the plastic some of it's going to be reflected, some of it's going to be absorbed, and some of it's going to be scattered. In this case the reflection diagnosis technique is looking at measuring the amount of reflected light from the surface of the application. So the simplest way to explain this is that as light strikes the surface, it's going to reflect a certain amount of light. Now, if there's a gap between the two plastics, as you can see in the example on the right, then more reflection is going to happen at that point. Now, as the two pieces of plastic are welded together, as you can see in the example on the left, less light is going to reflect off of the interface of the surface. Now, the reflection diagnosis system will measure this, and it will determine if too much light is being reflected, then it can let you know if there's a gap between the two pieces of plastic. So the fourth and final technique is burn detection. What you would like to see throughout an entire process is a very consistent heat all along the weld seam. Now, burn detection is going to measure the amount of heat coming off of the surface of the plastic, and anytime you see a heat spike, it's going to let you know that a, a burn probably took place. Now, two reasons a burn can take place. One is if a laser is left on a piece of plastic for too long, it's going to essentially vaporize the plastic and cause a heat flash, which is kind of what you can see here with this little spike. The second way you'll see a burn take place uh, during the process is if there's a contamination on top of or within the plastic. When the laser strikes this, it's going to burn it, and that burn will create another heat flash, and you'll see that reflected in the burn detection system. Now you don't want to have contaminants inside the plastic because if the laser is striking the contaminant and not the plastic then you can get a cold spot or a heat shadow and a weld won't be created along that point. And so that wraps up our ninth and final advantage as well as topics number two and number three. 
But before I conclude the webinar, I'd like to cover just a few disadvantages of laser plastic welding. So let's jump right into those. First off, and probably the most apparent, is the initial capital investment of laser plastic welding systems. Compared to other plastic joining methods, the systems are significantly more expensive, and this is often the largest barrier uh, to a company actually taking on laser plastic welding as their joining solution. However, do keep in mind that laser plastic welding has a very low total cost of ownership. Recall what we talked about previously. Uh, there are no consumables involved in the process, very minimal system maintenance, and fewer failed parts due to the excellent quality assurance. Disadvantage number two is part geometry limitations. Now, every joining method is going to have their own limitations. Uh, laser plastic welding has a few, and the most obvious is the transmissive layer thickness. We recommend a transmissive layer thickness of no more than three millimeters. And the reason why is because anything thicker than that, and you're gonna have a tough time transmitting enough laser energy to the weld interface to create the adequate heat uh, for a quality melt. Now there are a couple other part geometry limitations. Uh, they're a little more advanced, so we're not gonna cover them here. Um, if you'd like more information on those, again, you can get them from the design guidelines document that I will be introducing to you here in a minute. Disadvantage number three is that the plastics must be optically suited. You do have to have one piece of plastic that is transmissive to laser light and one piece that is absorptive. So this does provide some limitations when you're uh, trying to deal with certain types of plastic or certain colors of plastic. If you're very specific on the colors of your application, then this can provide certain limitations. However, do keep in mind that you are able to generate most color combinations using uh, additives, colors, dyes, or as you saw, the clear-to-clear -clear additive that we talked about. Disadvantage number four would be the tight part tolerances. Laser plastic welding is relatively unforgiving for uh, parts that are not injection molded very well. Precise part molding is very important. Any warpage or gaps uh, in the part can wreak havoc throughout the process and result in a very uh, poor quality weld. And with that final note, we can conclude today's webinar. I'd like to thank you for watching. And again, as I promised, here's the information on how you can collect a copy of our design guidelines document. Now, remember this document is designed for engineers and part designers uh, looking to determine if laser plastic welding is a viable solution for their uh, application. Also, feel free to use this contact information to get a hold of me. Uh, for comments or questions regarding this webinar. I look forward to any correspondence, and again, thank you for coming. Have a great day.